chicks in my area code is 516 and I would thrive. Hi, I'm Jennifer Ashley Tepper. And I am Joe Iconis, and you're listening to the Album Podcast on the Broadway Podcast Network. This episode is about the show-stopping number Amphibian, originally heard in the musical The Black Suits and as performed by Will Rowland and the family on the album. Yeah, um, we go super deep in the history of this song, uh, which is slightly more uh, convoluted and, um, and complicated than I even remembered before talking about it. We also talk in this episode about kind of the genre of songs in musicals where characters are writing a song. So that's exciting. Mm -hmm. Yes. For all you buddy musical theater writers out there, this is the episode for you. Also, if you like frogs, amphibians, really. Amphibian, I don't really fit in with any On this episode, we're going to be talking about one of my favorite Iconic songs, if I'm allowed to have favorites, and that song is Amphibian. Um, Another song about a creature, since we just talked about Party Hat, uh, Amphibian was written for the Black Suits, um, Mm -hmm. fairly late into the trajectory of the Black Suits. So at what point of the journey of that musical did you write Amphibian? I wrote Amphibian uh, when we did the production of Black Suits at Barrington Stage Company. And I wrote it, uh, I wrote it for a few reasons. I wrote it for the, so it's the amphibian in the show occurs at the top of act two. And the idea behind the song is that it's a song that uh, NATO and Brandon uh, who are kind of like the sidekicks of the show. If like, you know, Chris and John are like the the non-romantic lead love story of the show, um, uh, Nato and Brandon are the, the you know, the, the best buds. And um, I felt like I, I really wanted to give them their own moment. And I wanted to give a sense of um, the fun of, of, creating music you know like the the black suits for as much as it's about a high school garage band there's not a terrible amount of 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 moments in the show where the band is actually like making music or or playing music you know a lot of the the show is devoted to the you know relationships of the people in the band and um, and how the music affects them and how it it, it um, mirrors their mental state and how they use it to work through things. But there's not a lot of like guys hanging around a garage, you know, like shooting the shit, making making music. There, there was certainly more of that in the early days of the show. But eventually, like it was sort of a lot of it was cut away. And so I was like, oh, it would be so great to like just have a moment, you know, where we kind of capture this vibe of of guys, you know, making music and and having fun and and bickering and and all that and um and that went sort of hand in hand with needing uh something to start act two with for the the previous incarnation of the show which we did in uh, a workshop setting at the spf festival uh in new york city in 2008 act two began with joey's a punk rocker as kind of this like um this like sort of palate cleanser you know i'm a big fan of an act two that sort of begins with this like kind of self-contained moment or song that's sort of like okay we're getting back into it and now the real story is going to start and like most of like like most of the the things um that i do it's probably you know just totally ripped off from cabaret which starts with the the MC, uh, you know, chatting with the audience on the kick line that ensues, which is, of course, related to the show, but kind of feels like its own little like five minute 
um, mini musical uh, in and of itself. And so um, and so Joey's a punk rocker used to occupy that spot as sung by the character of um, Megan in the black suits. Uh, but as I believe we've talked about already, uh, Megan, the character was cut along with her, the song Joey's a punk rocker. And so there was this kind of hole at the top of, of act two. And um, Amphibian was what I wrote to to fill it. The other thing that Amphibian did was it's um, it's a song that references this character that I created um, for the the Black Suits iteration. I'm sorry, for the Barrington Stage Company iteration of Black Suits, uh, which is this ceramic frog uh, named Mr. Peepee, who <laughs> <laughs> who uh, NATO, uh, the character played by. Uh, Lance Rubin originally and Will Rowland at Barrington Stage Company. Uh, NATO uh, cherishes this this ceramic frog. It's a very large ceramic frog, and um, and kind of treats it as a as a mascot. Uh, and so Amphibian feels like a song that NATO started uh, to pay tribute to his uh, his beloved mascot, Mr. Peepee the frog. Um, yeah. Were any of the older songs from Black Suits that got cut away, as you said, where the guys are like making music, were any of the other ones like that, did they come from a place of like, we're making this song up for the first time, like the way Amphibian sort of does of like, we're improving it a little or jamming? You, you know, a, a lot of the, the, uh, the songs that I wrote that sort of like, that sort of like showed the black suits as a band they were they were usually like coming in or out of a scene and so they were like snippets if they felt like rehearsal snippets so it you you never really got the sense of like them making up songs on the spot it always kind of felt like oh they had previously worked on this song and now we're gonna like hear it rehearsed you know um and i have to say i i tend to find it very cringy in in musicals or movies or plays when there are characters who are like writing something in real time i think it's really really hard to do that well to have it actually seem like you know, a human being like coming up with a with a with a song in real time, especially if it's you're trying to show a collaboration. You know, there's just like so many scenes in movies where it's like two people are writing a song and it's it just it always feels fake. It always feels like, you know, it's like when doctors watch ER and they're like, this is so not how it is. Anytime you see songwriting in a, in a movie or a TV show or, or a musical, it's, that's never how it is. It's just, you can't, you can't fake it. And so, and so I think I was, I was scared to attempt to write something that implied that this thing was, you know, being made up in real time. Um, but I tried with Amphibian and I think in the context of the show, we we do as well as one possibly could. Uh, for me, something that was helpful was like just thinking of like, um, you know, NATO is a bass player. And so when Amphibian starts, it's just bass. And so I needed to write something that was really simple where you could get the the melody of the song and you could understand what the song was with just voice and and bass. And the simplicity of it, I think, is something that that helps. And the goofiness of it, which, you know, totally feels tied to the character, um, it it makes it it makes it feel like um you know, I think it I think it makes it feel a little more authentic. You know, it feels like, oh, yeah, this kid, this actually is something that we could imagine this kid coming up with on the spot as he's playing this really simple pattern on the bass that he's probably played 10 million times before. Um, and then, you know, in the show, The Black Suits, all of the 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 verses that are on the album aren't aren't in Amphibian. I think there's just one one verse and there's this whole other section that involves Brandon um, played by uh, played by Harrison Chad and the Barrington production. Uh, Brandon comes in and starts um, and starts rapping essentially over <laughs> over the the bass um, the bass figure, uh, which I, I I like it I like a lot, but it felt like not um, not appropriate to include on the album as it's not really a standalone thing. In terms of the kind of interesting conversation about like the craft of musical theater, when a character has to write a song, um, it is 
I think really like instructive, especially if anyone who's listening to this, like wants to write a musical or is kind of working on doing their best version of this. I feel like the shows that do this well and the, you know, where Amphibian does it well is like, it's so based in the character. It's so based mm -hmm. in like something funny that the character would actually do and how that like generates a song. And I feel like as hard as it is to do this well and as many times as we've seen it done badly, it's even harder to do it when it's funny. Um, I was actually thinking about this. I saw a very wonderful production of The Goodbye Girl recently. And like, you know, the song Paula is not the same. It's not like, mm -hmm. you know, the character improvs this song, sort of. You know, it starts out by like this character we know to be kind of like a funny actor who might improv is improving a song. And I was like, that is such a rare occurrence in a musical where you really feel like it's genuinely funny and it comes out of a character writing a song on the spot in that format. Yeah. Um, that's my tangent about that. No, I think that that's that's a great that's a great tangent and right on. Yeah, I think you're right. There's something about like the it's like it feels like when it gets when it when we see it and it's cringy, it's because it's it's because it's so general, you know, and because it, it feels like the songs, the song themselves themselves have nothing to do with the characters who are singing it. And also, I feel like so often when there is a moment like that where we're seeing characters like write a song it's always supposed to be that that song is like the best song ever written. You know, it's right, always supposed to be like, this is the song that's going to save them all. And yeah. I think that as soon as you do that in a show too, um, I, you know, unless it's maybe like five songs ever written, like, you know, <laughs> New York, New York, of, of which is, is one of them. Um, you just can't, you're only setting yourself up to have the audience feel like that's not that good. You know, it's like the... Well, I think the hard thing about this also in terms of the art form is like we've seen it in so many jukebox musicals now, this trope, where yeah, it right, actually right. is a great song and the lead up to it is like, oh my God, so-and-so, are you going to write this? And it's some great hit writer who's, you know, musical, jukebox musical, we're already in the theater to see. And then it does turn out to be, you know, Sweet right. Caroline. Right. <laughs> a Beautiful Noise was the last most recent jukebox musical I saw. So that's what I'm saying. But um, yeah, it, it happens in jukebox musicals and you're like, oh, that is a great song. So when an uh, original musical writer is tasked with doing it, especially if it's a dramatic moment, the stakes are very high for the actual, you know, hit quality <laughs> of the song. It's almost a little bit impossible. And you're right. They're almost always like a, a it's a general it's like a very um you know generic song that they're trying to write a love yeah. song for the radio it feels like there's a lot of instances of that um amphibian is not one of them also very strange about amphibian is like when did you know that this very specific very character driven song for a musical was going to be able to translate to being like kind of an out of context concert showstopper because it feels like it almost shouldn't be like it's very unlikely that this would be the song that translates to you know a, a room full of concert goers kind of singing along right yeah no it, it is it's like a, it feels like amphibian was like the surprise hit of that run of <laughs> of <laughs> black suits um you know which also like featured a really incredible performance by like a pre dear evan hansen ben platt and so i feel like if like you know pre evan hansen ben platt having like musical panic attacks in a in a you know a really small theater <laughs> when that is like trumped by idiot will roll and singing about like frogs <laughs> it's like yeah there's something to this song you know <laughs> um and and so people just always you know liked it a lot and like everyone always mentioned it to me and so i the first time we ever did this song in concert i believe was at the um the the gig at musical theater factory uh, uh where um uh, it was the gig that I first did Try Again at. It was after uh, Be More Chill closed the Two River in July of 2015. I think that was the first time we did Amphibian. Um, and I and I believe Harrison Chad sang it for the first time. And uh, and I wrote I wrote the extra verse for it for that because I knew like, oh, it's not going to it's not going to make sense to have the like the the Brandon rap in it uh because the rap you know is about it's so specifically tied to the a dialogue scene and he's he's singing about beethoven and marley matlin and <laughs> um and it's uh and it felt like oh this this is not going to hang by itself um but the but the the song itself might and um yeah and from like the first time it was performed people just reacted in a very visceral way to the song and you know what's so funny about it it's like it almost feels like a cover 
For me, it almost <laughs> feels like a song I didn't write because when I wrote it, I was so thinking about it being written by, um, by you know, uh, Nato Obenkrieger and and Brandon Keese. Um, it it doesn't it doesn't feel like I would never in a million years write that song if I was just like sitting down to write a standalone song. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a song that only could have been written like by you know character but by myself in collaboration with with characters and i will even say this when i when i first wrote it i you know i was at barrington and so uh the great bill finn um who's been a a, a real supporter and sort of mentor to me throughout my career uh he was you know at barrington stage company running this musical theater you know uh stage uh, uh, and he was really around, you know, the black suits a lot. And so I wrote it and he like, he, he really loved it. He thought it was just great. And I said to him, yeah, you know, the only thing I, the only thing that bugs me about it is that, uh, amphibian and, and oblivion don't really rhyme. <laughs> and, and he said, what are you talking about? And I was like, well, they don't, you know, it's like, it should be like, it would, it, amphibian and oblivion would rhyme. Uh, but because it's the, you know, the consonants, the B and the V, they don't, they don't, they don't match up. So it's not really a rhyme, but it almost is. And he, he said, it rhymes just like that. He was so <laughs> dismissive of me, of me bitching about those two words, not rhyming. And, and I've thought about that so often in my life where it's like, and I think of Bill Finn as, you know, He's like a, the consummate lyricist and his stuff rhymes for real and the, you know, and and the the um the integrity of his lyric writing is so high um that it's like, okay, he he thought that those those words, you know, rhymed enough that it's it's okay. So it's it's, it's also like yeah. Yeah, it's within the world of the piece. And, you know, Bill Finn as a professor has sat through, I'm sure, many classes where none of the songs rhyme and everyone is trying to write something that sounds like the radio where it's like, you know, mm -hmm. on a far different level. But, you know, I think Bill Finn sitting in a rehearsal for his own show, you know, in whenever time period, the 90s, um, would have also said the same thing as you and been criticizing himself for that lack of rhyme. <laughs> but at the end of the day, isn't it that, you know, those characters would use that rhyme, you know, whereas someone who is not writing a song, but is hearing the song in their head might rhyme perfectly, if that makes sense. Yeah, of course it does. Like a hundred, a hundred percent. And honestly, I think that like, if you know, if I heard that song as written by Nato and Brandon, I would feel like, oh, these these kids are great writers. I'd be like, this is very, <laughs> yeah. this is a very, very good song. Very advanced. They're really, really good. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. And, you know, it's like this is, um, you know, not to be like, um, not to be like, I, I guess, gauche or something and, and talk about specific things that people have said about me in, in the, the, the press. But, you know, one of the one of the criticisms that I've always thought was so funny of, of Be More Chill in the Times Review was, um, uh, you know, Ben Brantley said that uh, it's like it's that like the writing was so amateurish that it's like not only about uh high school kids but it sounds like something that could have been made up by high school kids and that oh that's always like that's always stuck in my brain because i really do pride myself on anything that i write i i write in the vocabulary of the human beings who inhabit the story and so um you know as i've said many times like be more chill on the the you know the the words that those characters use are you know it's 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 completely different you know set of <laughs> a set of you know uh, 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 vocabulary and references and blah 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 than the characters in love and hate nation use or the characters in the untitled unauthorized hunter s thompson musical use um and that's intentional you know and and um and that's how i always want to write but i've always felt like you know it's like yeah be more chill like the the words they use are very blunt and you know they're not flowery and they speak in a specific way but if those characters were writing like musical theater songs, they wouldn't sound anything like Be More Chill. And I always think like, you know, listen to like Amphibian, you know, it's like the, 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 the you know, the Amphibian, which is so tied to the, the specific characters who wrote it in, in Black Suits. It's still like, it still sounds different from the songs 
that they sing when they're expressing themselves, you know, internally. It's like Amphibian sounds totally different from Social Worker, even though it's from the same show, because like if, you know, if Chris Thurzer was going to write a song, when we hear some of the songs, they wouldn't necessarily sound like Social Worker, even though he's singing that. Um, and so I've always like I've always thought about the the just the connection between like, you know, the characters, how they sing in a musical and how they would how they would how they would sing if they were, you know, if we were hearing them write a musical. And I think it's actually two different things. Yeah, that makes total sense. Um, I guess the the critics didn't know that you tricked them, that you wrote so authentically for high school characters that they thought it sounded like high school high school characters wrote it. Yeah, I really I tricked nice them. work. Thank you so much. I'm really I'm really proud of it. But I think in, you know, it's what you said, held up against other shows, the references are different. The way of, you know, speaking and articulating is different. Yeah. Um, yeah. It is interesting, though, when it's, you know, you've talked in other podcast episodes about not feeling like you respond to writing on spec because you need to be writing from, a, like, character's perspective that you're really familiar with or mm -hmm. your, you know, your own perspective and putting, you know, your brain inside a character however you articulated it was better than that. But I feel like Amphibian, the way you just described it in this episode, makes me think like, oh, if you were auditioning to write a musical about a high school garage band, like Amphibian could never have come out of your head. Like it is far away. I feel like it's only after sitting with those characters maybe and watching them evolve through different iterations of black suits that it was like, how would Brandon and Nato write a song? Like I feel like it's... um that thing when you're out of town with a musical and you couldn't have written the song for the characters without having gone through the process first more than I maybe realized before. Uh, oh my gosh. Yeah. A hundred percent. And it's like, and some things, and some things, you know, I think I, I can just jump in and, and write a song about and it'll, it'll work and it'll be fine. Um, but a lot of things like I just, I need to be immersed in the, in the characters. I need to be fully inhabiting their headspace um, because I think that I, yeah, I'm just at my, my best and I'm at my most, you know, I'm at my most me when I'm writing really specifically and I'm, I'm, I'm writing using things, uh, from the characters lives and experiences as opposed to like, you know, what someone might think a teenager would sing about or, or think about or feel about. Yeah. Amphibian. Amphibian, five, real five, deep one, dive. Six. Oh, you know what? And I, we should just talk. We should talk about the like, you know, the the basic shit too before we go. Uh, five one six is the area code of Nassau County, where I am from, uh, uh, which you know I guess is an easily Googleable thing, but uh, that's what it is. And uh, Black Suits takes place in in Garden City, Long Island, where I am also from. Uh, and uh, just shout out to the incredible arrangements on this track. Um, you know, Black Suits is a is a show that's about a high school garage band. And so the, the orchestrations are pretty, pretty basic. And so far as like the stuff I've written, it's just like a straight up little rock band uh, in the band. And so, uh, you know, Charlie Rosen really blew this one out with the horn section. And it just feels like the <laughs> huge, like the hugest, um, you know, most massive, like, you know, uh, rock ska uh you know whatever uh rave up and that's um that's all from the the brain of of the incredible charlie rosen and those gorgeous uh horn players on the track mm -hmm. love it forever amphibian amphibian <laughs> Hey, thanks so much for listening or watching to my podcast. Uh, do me a favor and go to wherever you just listen to or watch this thing and subscribe or like or give us a great rating or review and then head to bpn.fm slash album to find out even more information about this podcast, more ways to watch, more ways to listen and check out my album, Album. Thanks so much for hanging out. Album Podcast is executive produced by Liz Armstrong. Produced by Dory Berenstein, Alan Seals, Kim Garris, and the rest of the team at the Broadway Podcast Network. Be sure to visit bpn.fm slash album for both audio and video versions of this podcast and to listen to album. Yeah.